So here we have a picture of a landscape and I want to draw some birds. Instead of drawing right here, I take a transparent sheet of paper and draw the birds right here. Now, the pen isn't working as well, but you get the point. I now have the freedom to move the bird around. I can rotate the birds. Digitally, I can even enlarge it. However, if I had directly painted the birds right here, I cannot even erase it. Erasing it will erase the image. I cannot move it around. I cannot rotate it or enlarge it. However, in this one, I can do whatever I want. And on top of that, I can remove it as well. Similarly, in Photoshop, we have the same landscape. And if we create a new layer by clicking on this button inside of the layers panel, we have our new layer right here. And right inside of it, if we paint the birds, we have the freedom to rotate it by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Don't forget transform. We can rotate it, we can make it larger or smaller, we can move it around, do whatever we want. We can even turn it off and on. On the other hand, just like in that paper example, if we had not painted on that transparent sheet, in this case, the layer, and if we had directly painted right here, we couldn't rotate it, remove it, or do whatever we wanted. We couldn't even press Ctrl or Command T because this background layer is locked. Even if we unlocked it, we pressed Ctrl or Command T, it would just make the whole thing larger, rotate the whole thing, and move the whole thing around. That completely takes away your freedom. We cannot even erase it. If we try to do so by picking the eraser tool right here and try to paint over the birds, it just will erase the whole thing. So all in all, what are layers? We just did the experiment. Layers are like transparent sheets of paper, one on top of the other, and these sheets of paper can contain a graphic, or an adjustment. Now, what do I mean by an adjustment? So here we have our landscape as a background. On top of that, we have our birds as a graphic. And on top of that, we can have an adjustment. We're going to get to it later. But for right now, you can click on the adjustment layer icon and choose any of these adjustments. For example, let us choose photo filter. You can add this color to the entire image. Let's check that. And then you can increase the density according to your liking. So there you go. It warms up the entire image. So here you have the graphic of birds and on top of that we have an adjustment which adjusts all of the layers beneath it. We have lots of fun projects in this lesson so make sure to download the practice files linked up in the description. Also if you are a Pix Creative Patreon member you can download the finished PSDs of all of these examples and all of the videos that we have created assets for here at Pix Imperfect. So first of all why are layers so important? So here we have a very simple design of which I got the idea from Adobe Express. If you're interested I'll link it up in the description. Adobe Express is one of the easiest ways to create designs quickly without opening Photoshop, but this is a Photoshop class. So here is a very simple gradient background. On top of that, we have some text. Now, I wanted the subject to be on top of the text and we have a fun project on text behind subject later. But for right now, we have this text. On top of that, we have a subject and then we have some other text. So right now, we have the flexibility to change literally whatever we want, not just the background and the text. Have a look at this. So of course, we can double click right here, single click right here and change the background to whatever gradient we want. We can create our gradient as well. Hit OK, hit OK again. We can change the text as well. For example, we double click on the T to select that text and change it to, for example, match. And on the other hand, we can even move the subject, make it bigger, smaller. There's also a fun thing we can do. Select the subject layer, press Ctrl or Command T. You can make it smaller or larger, rotate it to whatever you want. On top of that, here's the fun thing. You can go to edit and then puppet warp. This is exciting. You wanna make sure show mesh is checked so that you can see what is happening right there. You can expand it a little bit to avoid artifacts. Again, this is an advanced adjustment, but you can play with it. So right here, we can create a point right here. We can create another point. So create points across the body and then you can move it. For example, you can select this point, hold the Alt key or the Option key, a circle appears around and then you can just drag to move. So cool, isn't it? Select this one, hold the Alt key or the Option key, just move it like that. And once you're done, hit enter or return. So here was the before, here's the after. You can create more points to lock in the subject, but you get the point. Now let's go back to how it was. Remember we learned about history. You can open up the history panel by clicking on this button or going to window and making sure history is checked. You can click at the very top to go back to how the document was when you first opened it. Now let us merge all of these layers. Select the topmost layer, hold the shift key, select the bottommost layer, every layer in between will be selected. Another way of selecting multiple layers is holding the control or command and 
keep on clicking on layers you want to select. For example, you want to select this one, you hold the controller command, you want to select this one, both of them would be selected. If you want to select layers in series, you know what to do, select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one in the series. Once selected, if you press control or command E, all of those layers would be merged. Right now, I'm stuck. I cannot even change the background. I cannot change the text. Everything is burned into those pixels and I cannot even move the subject. I would have to make a selection, remove the text, add that back in. So all of those flexibilities are gone. And that is why layers are extremely important. By the way, another shortcut to merge all of the layers, whether you have selected them or not, is pressing Control, Shift and E. There you go. I didn't even select all of them and everything is merged. If you select some of them, for example, you selected the subject and the text layers. So let's select the first one, hold the shift key and select the last one you want to select in the series. I don't want to select the background and then you press Ctrl or Command E. Only those would be merged. So Ctrl or Command E to merge the selected layers and Ctrl or Command Shift and E to merge all of the layers irrespective of whether you have selected them or not. By now, I'm sure you already know this and I'm so proud of you, but we have to discuss this topic, that is visibility, a little more in detail. Take a look at this project that we did. Here's the original image. By the way, how am I doing all of this? That is why this discussion is important. On top of that, we removed the blemishes. Let's turn on that layer. As you can see, here's the before. Some blemishes are there. Here's the after blemishes are removed. On top of that, we applied some skin tones. We added a little bit of contrast. There was some discoloration on the lips, as you can see right here. We fixed that with discoloration layers. On top of that, we did some dodging and burning. As you can see, it makes it amazing. And on top of that, there's some contrast, uniforming the skin tone, adding shine to the eyes, rear light, jaw light. We boosted the lip colors. We added some redness to the cheek. Here's the before. Here's the after, you see that? And we reduced the overall highlights. Now, why is visibility important? Because sometimes we need to turn off and on layers to see whether we need it or not, or whether we need it in that much intensity or not. In this case, let us say we don't like the eye shine and we want to turn it off. So how do we turn off the visibility? Think of it this way. How do we see? How are you watching this video? With our eyes, right? If we didn't have eyes, we wouldn't see. Similarly, in Photoshop, if we didn't have that eye, we wouldn't see that layer. So when you see the eye, that layer is turned on. And when the eye goes away, that is not visible. So that's an easy way to remember it, to see or not to see. Now, it is not just limited to that. Now, let's say you want to see just that layer and nothing else. How do we make something solo? You simply hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the eye and all of the other eyes just go away. In other words, their visibility goes away. Now, if you hold the Alt key or the Option key again, and you click on that eye again, everything turns back on. Let's say in this example, you just wanted to see the subject layer. You hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the eye of the subject layer. Only that is turned on, everything else turns off. And if you want to set it back to how it was, hold the Alt key or the Option key again and click on the eye, everything turns back on. Let us take it a step further and let us say layers at random were turned off and you want to turn everything back on. How do we do that? Let's right click on in here and choose show or hide all other layers. Click on that, do it one more time and everything is turned on. Now, did you know in the later versions of Photoshop, you can zoom in to the contents of a particular layer. For example, let's say you're working on the good text. You can hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the good, it zooms in right there. You want to work on the subject, you hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on that layer it zooms into that. So whatever you have in any layer, let's create a new layer, let's take a brush and just paint some random stuff right here, okay? If you hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on that layer, it zooms into that. So that's a funky little feature to help you focus on a layer. Now let's say you don't see the layers panel. Something came over you, you closed it or it simply went missing. First thing to do is not to panic. Secondly, if you're missing any panels in Photoshop, all you need to do is to go to Window and make sure that panel is turned on. In this case, it is layers. Just simply click on it, it will show up and then you can stick it up right over here. Now let's understand the concept of background layers with a very simple example. So here I have opened an image of a beautiful texture, wonderful light leak and whenever you open an image or create a new document with a background, it shows up as a background layer and it has a lock icon right there. Now what does that mean? Let us understand. Now let's say you want to apply this texture or light leak to a particular image. Let's open that image. Let's go to our finder or explorer and I'm just gonna drag in and drop in that photo 
over the canvas. Now this is fantastic. Let's name this layer. How do we name a layer in Photoshop? We double click on the text and you can name it to whatever you want. However, if you try to name the background layer, it won't let you do it unless you convert it into a regular layer and that's what it's doing right now. Let's hit cancel for now. The other thing we want to do is we want the texture to be on top of the subject, of course, because we want the light leak to be above the subject. But we cannot do that. We cannot change the order. So far we have talked about two properties of the background layer. You cannot name it, you cannot change its stacking order. Also when you're adding texture, sometimes you want to reduce the opacity, but you cannot do that with the background layer. You cannot even change the blend mode which we have to do to apply that texture. So basically the background layer is something that is meant to stay in the background and absolutely prevent transparency. For example, let's turn off the subject layer for a moment. If you take the eraser and even if you try to erase, it just paints it white. You know why it paints it white? Because the background color is white. Have a look right here. The square at the top is the foreground color. The square at the back is the background color. Now if you click on it and set the background color to something else, for example, red, and then if you select the eraser tool right here and you try to erase it, it will turn red. So at any cost, the background layer prevents transparency. And that is why you cannot even move it. So if you choose the move tool right here and if you try to move it, it won't let you move it. There you go, it shows the error. Now how do we get around it? You guessed it right, we have to convert the background layer into a regular layer. There are lots of ways to do it. The easiest way is simply clicking on the lock right here. Now it's unlocked, layer zero. Also you can double click on it, name the layer to whatever you want. For example, let's name it light leak. Hit OK and there you have the light leak layer. So any of the ways you can use. Now let's bring the subject under the light leak. Now we want the light leak to interact with the layers beneath. Of course we can decrease the opacity and that looks OK but we want it to interact. And how do we make the layers interact with other layers in various ways? And here my friend is your introduction to blending modes or blend modes. And what does blend modes do? The answer is in the question, it blends the layer in various ways. So click on the drop down right here and you can choose whatever blend mode you want. And as you hover through it, it's going to give you a preview of how each blend mode is going to look like. Now blend mode is a whole different lesson which we'll cover in the future. I also have a video on 27 blend modes and what they do scientifically right here. We have several videos on blend modes but we'll cover it as a part of this course. For right now, just know that screen brightens, multiply darkens, Overlay adds contrast and normal blend mode is the regular normal blend mode shows the image the way it is. And then you have other blend modes like color which colors the image according to that layer and there's a plethora of those. For right now, let's choose screen and there you have it, a wonderful light leak texture. But this is too much. How do we make the layers more transparent? You already know this and that is opacity. Simply decrease the opacity. In this case, I'm going to go for 76. That works perfectly. Now what if you wanted, you don't really have to, but what if you wanted to convert the subject layer into a background layer so that it just doesn't move around, you cannot change the opacity or the blend mode. How can we do that? All you need to do is to go to layer, new and choose background from layer. Make sure that layer is selected first of all. If you pick that and there you go, this is now a background layer. You cannot move it. It will show you an error. You cannot erase things because now it will paint it with the background color. You cannot change the opacity or the blend mode. So that's how the full circle works. Now I need to point this out. Ideally we would open the subject image first and on top of that we would bring in the overlay. But I did it in reverse order just to explain how background layers work. Now this is what you would do. You would open the subject image and on top of that you would bring in the light leak like this. Now the reason I'm showing you this again is that this is right now a smart object. We're going to cover smart object later. But you should know that smart objects look like this. It's like a layer but with this icon. And one of the limitations of smart objects is that you cannot paint on it. You cannot change the pixels. So if you take the brush, try to paint on it, it won't let you do it. It will ask you to convert that layer into a regular layer. If you try the smudge tool, it just won't work. If you try the healing tools, it won't work. In any way, it won't let you change the pixels. So in that case, you would have to convert this layer into a regular raster layer. Right click on it and then choose rasterize layer. And now you can do whatever you want. For example, first of all, let's change the blend mode to screen like it was before. Change the opacity to about 80%. And right now let's say I don't like the lines on top of the face so I just want to erase it. So I would choose the spot healing brush tool. Click and hold on the patch group. Choose the spot healing brush tool. You want to make sure you sample just this layer not the layer beneath. So let's turn it off and just paint on the spots you want to remove. There you go. They're gone. So easy. 
from right here as well. There you go. So whenever you're adding texture, this is an important tip. You don't want a lot over the face. There you are. But you have to keep it natural at the same time. By the way, I got this light leak from Envato Elements. It's a platform I highly recommend. Unlike many other stock platforms, you can just pay a monthly fee and get access to unlimited assets, millions of assets. Light leaks, Photoshop brushes, Photoshop plugins as well, images, stock videos, and the list just goes on. So check it out for the latest offers and discounts. Check the links in the description. You should know some quick shortcuts for opacity for a quick check. For example, right here, the opacity is set to 80%. If you have any non-brushing tools selected, and I stress this again, non-brushing tool, for example, the move tool right here. If you press any number, for example, you pressed four, opacity is right now 40. If you pressed seven, opacity is 70. If you pressed eight, opacity is 80. So it's a good way to check. So this is how it looks with 30, 60, 40, 90, Maybe I like something around 70. Now, if you press two numbers quickly in succession, the opacity would be that. For example, 74. Press 7 and 4 quickly. Now it's 74. 4, 5. It's 45. 7, 5. 75. 9, 6. 96. So, pressing it with a little gap in time sets it to that. For example, 7 is 70. 4 is 40. But press quickly, for example, 4, 6. Now it's 46. Now, do keep in mind that if you have any of the brushing tools selected, for example, the brush tool right here, that has opacity in the options bar. If you press these shortcuts, for example, you pressed 5, it changes the opacity of the tool. 3 for 30, 8 for 80, 5, 6 quickly for 56. All right. Similarly, for the pencil tool as well, it will do the same. 30, 50, 56. All right. Similarly, for the mixer brush or any of the brushing tools, even the art history or the history brush tool, those are tools that you wouldn't use, the art history and the history so much. But you get the point. These are important ones like the mixer brush and the brush tool. So make sure you're not in any of the tools where you have opacity in the options bar. Only then when you press the shortcuts, the opacity of the layers change. Another shortcut that applies not just to opacity but any numeric parameter in Photoshop is this. If you hover the mouse over that parameter text, in this case it is the opacity, if you click and drag to the right, it increases. If you click and drag to the left, it decreases. And you can easily tell when the cursor turns into a pointing hand with two arrows on either side. Similarly, with any other parameter, for example, fill, you can decrease it and increase it. By the way, what is fill and how is it different? Again, fill is a very vast topic and we will cover it in the next lesson. You can do some incredible, incredible effects with it and we will have some fun projects too. Another shortcut, if you hold the shift key and then if you click and drag to the right or left, it goes very quickly. So quickly with just little movements, it is now zero and just with a little movement, it is at 100. However, if you hold the alt key and then if you click and drag or the option key on a Mac, it happens very quickly very slowly. Like this much movement got me to zero and this much movement gets me to 100. So for finer adjustments, hold the Alt key and for quick adjustments, hold the Shift key as you drag in that opacity and for normal speed and don't press anything. Now let's talk about the concept of transparency. Transparency is denoted by checker boxes in Photoshop. So if we take an eraser and try to erase the white background, it is not doing anything. Actually, it is doing something. It's painting it in white because the background color is white. So let's change the background color to something else, for example, green. And if we try to erase it, it's not making it transparent. Why? Because this is a background layer. We just learned it. So let's turn this layer into a regular layer by simply clicking on this lock. Right now, if you take the eraser and you try to erase it, have a look right here. There is nothingness and nothingness is shown with checker boxes like this. Now, how do we remove the background right here very quickly? Since all of the background is white, we can easily use the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool simply selects similar colors. So let's pick that. And now make sure tolerance is around 20%. That is fine. And the settings are the same as what you see right here and click on the white areas and all of the white areas are now selected. You can simply press the delete key and now it is transparent. Now you might really ask, what is tolerance in Mish? Well, it is easy to understand. Let's say you're throwing your birthday party, all right? And you have food enough for a particular number of people. And that is your tolerance. The amount of food you have is your tolerance. Now you called a friend. She came over, but she brought another friend of hers. And you're like, okay, 
I didn't invite her, but that's fine. I have enough food. That is your tolerance. Now, what if that friend brings one more friend? You're still like, okay, I have enough food. It will be all right. But let's say that friend brings four another more friends. And you're like, okay, now this is not going to work. We would have to get more food probably. Similarly in Photoshop, tolerance is the amount of food you have and the amount of colors you can feed. Or in other words, select. So if the tolerance is 1, right here we have a gradient from purple to blue, right? If we click right here, only that one friend comes in that is very close to you. He or she cannot bring other friends which are similar to them. But if the tolerance is higher, like let's say 10, and then if you click, more friends can come in because you have more food right now. If the tolerance is at 40, and if you click right here, more similar colors get selected. So you get the idea of tolerance now. It is simply how much similar colors can the selection select, or in other words, tolerate. So once you have the background taken out, you can save this as a PNG, not a JPEG, because JPEG does not support transparency. It will have a white background if you save it as a JPEG. So let's go to File. Of course, you can choose Save a Copy and Save it as a PNG. You can also go to Export and choose Export as, also Quick Export as a PNG. Choose Export as. There's so many ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. Let us choose the format as PNG, that is fine. Width and height is fine. You can also choose to convert it to sRGB, which is the standard color profile, and embed the color profile. Click on Export. Let's save it as Be Transparent. There you go. Now, whenever you have any image where you want to bring in the B as an asset, you can open that image. And on top of that, if you bring the regular image, the white background will come with it, of course. But if you bring the transparent one, only the B will come in. So I deleted that layer and we'll learn how to delete layers later. So let's drag it and drop it right here. There you go. Just the B. Looks fantastic in this one. Time for us to do a fun project and with this we'll learn the basic functions of the layers panel. Now we'll cover an effect which is very popular especially with the later iPhone wallpapers text behind the subject and we have seen it everywhere. It's high in demand. Let us do it. So when you look at this image, this image looks a little tilted or crooked. So let's select the crop tool. The shortcut to which is C. You can also Click right here, but always remember shortcuts. And how do you find the shortcuts? If you click and hold, it just says right there. For example, the shortcut for the brush tool, you click and hold, it says right there. That is B. Crop tool is C. All right. Now, once the crop tool is selected, at the top, you have the straighten button right here. Click on that and draw a straight line along the thing which should have been straight. So I'm going to create a straight line along this. And this is about straight. It was showing zero degrees. So what is crooked? Let's go back to how it was. So what is really crooked? As you can see, the mat is crooked. The horizon is straight, but the mat is crooked. How do we fix this? First of all, let us make a copy of the background layer. And here's the first basic function. How do we duplicate a layer? We simply do that by pressing Control or Command J. We make a copy of the layer that was selected. Again, I'm going to repeat that again for you. Select the background layer or any layer you want to create a duplicate of and press Control or Command J. Now, another long way of doing that, if you are charging by the hour, is simply going to Layer, New, and choose Layer Wire Copy. Have a look at the shortcut, Control or Command J. There you go. Now, here's another basic function. If you apply any filter to it by going to Filter, let's say Noise and Add Noise, let's add a lot of noise, it is burned into the pixels. You cannot reduce the filters later. You cannot change the values later. So you're stuck. So how do we fix this? First of all, let's go back by pressing Ctrl or Command Z or Z. Now right click on that layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Or you can also go to Filter and choose Convert for Smart Filters. Both will do the same thing and it will convert the layer into a smart object. Hit OK. Now we're going to discuss the advantages of smart objects later. But one of the major advantage is that if you add any filter, in this case, let's go to noise and then add noise again. Hit OK. It adds as a smart filter. Now you can double click on it and change the value to whatever you like. You can also delete the smart filter by dragging it and dropping it to the trash can. Right. And that's also how you delete a layer. So another basic function. How do we delete a layer? Let's drag it and drop it into the trash can. One more way of deleting the layer is simply selecting the layer and pressing the delete key. It also deletes the layer. And yes, of course, with the layer selected, you can click on the trash can icon. It also deletes it, but it shows up this warning. If you don't want to see it, check don't show again and click on yes to take it away. So again, let's press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy and let's name this layer fixed. We'll fix it. 
Now let's convert this layer into a smart object by going to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Now let's apply a filter that is so amazing that there can be a class for it. Let's go to filter and that is the camera raw filter. Now of course you have all of those basic functions like exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows and all of that. Let's collapse these settings for now. Scroll down and go to geometry and inside of that click on this button right here. Now we know that this is straight so draw a straight line across it. There you go. And we want to straighten this thing. So let's draw a straight line across this one. And it will make it straight. Hit OK once you're satisfied. And the best part is this is a smart filter. You can double click on it and change the stuff right here. Click on draw guides and you can change the lines. Let's hit cancel for now. Now to put the text behind, we have to have the subject at the top. So let's make a copy of the fixed layer. Press Ctrl or Command J. And let's name this layer subject. Now we want to simply mask out the background from this one so that only the subject stays. So let's select any of these three selection tool, the magic tool, the quick selection or the object selection tool. And once you do, at the top you will see select subject. Click on that and it will make a pretty good selection of the subject. However, it's not very, very accurate. So to make it more accurate, here's another tip for the later versions of Photoshop and that is, if you click on the drop down right next to select subject, you will have the option to process it in the cloud. So if you're not too concerned about privacy, it will be safe. I don't know, but it's up to you. Do it at your own risk. So choose cloud, click on select subject. It does a better selection and it creates a better result. So as you can see, it is, better. Have a look at this. It is much better than the previous one. So once you have the selection active, you want to click on this button that creates a mask or in other words, a cutout. So right here, as you can see, white are the areas that show up and black are the areas that hide. Right now, you cannot see it because other layers are turned on. But if you hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the eye and only keep that turned on, you can see it properly. As you can see, the subject is white, so you can see that. And the background is black, therefore you cannot see it. Let's turn everything back on. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the I. Now just behind this, we want our text. By the way, if you don't want to see the smart filters, if you want to just hide it in, click on this arrow right there. There you go, hidden. Let's select the layer beneath it. Choose the text tool and click to type in. Now it's very small. Let's make it larger like this so that we can see as we type. Type in, stay centered. All right, let's make it larger. Select the Move tool. Press Control or Command D. And let's make it larger like that. Now this is behind the subject, but there's an issue. The background is too bright and we cannot even see the text. So how do we create an adjustment so that all of the layers under it become darker? Simply by creating an adjustment layer. And how do we create an adjustment layer? Simply by clicking on the adjustment layer icon, which is this circle with half gray or white and half black. Click on that and then choose exposure for now. You can also choose curves. That is a little more advanced for now. Keep it simple and choose exposure. And we wanted it behind the text. So let's bring it behind the text and simply decrease the exposure. There you go. The text is now visible. Let's keep it 0.5 minus 0.5 and that's just perfect. Now the stay centered text definitely needs to stay centered. And how do we make that happen? We already learned about it in lesson one. So after this video, if you haven't watched, watch that. Simply with the move tool selected, make sure inside of the three dots, align to canvas is selected and then you can center it according to the canvas. Right here, click on this button or click on this button to align it to the left. But right now nothing is happening. You know why? Because the exposure layer is selected, not the stay centered layer. You can center it horizontally. You can align it to the left, to the right, center it vertically, up to you. So I'm going to set it to how it was this way. Now let's add a little more text right here. Let's say this is a live class. And by the way, we want the subject to be centered as well. And for it, we have to stretch the image. Press C for the crop tool. And you want to make sure delete crop pixels is checked off. We don't want to do that. And center it so that the subject is in the center. I stretched it a little bit. Now what about the rest of the areas? Of course, you can fill it with a lot of tools that are coming up in Photoshop. But you know what? Nobody's going to notice. All you need to do is select the fixed layer where you had fixed it. Now you should know that we cannot change the pixels of the smart object. So here's another basic function. Let's say you selected an area and this whole area and you want this area to be on a separate layer all by itself. How do we make that happen? Once you make that selection and we made that selection with the rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to do that again for you. So we selected the rectangular marquee tool and we made a selection with the fixed layer selected 
and then pressed Ctrl or Command J. That is the same shortcut as creating a duplicate layer. And when you do have a selection, only that area goes into the other layer. Press Ctrl or Command T, and I want to stretch it, but if I try to do that, it just makes everything larger. So how do we make sure it doesn't maintain the aspect ratio? We hold the shift key and then just stretch it. Trust me, nobody's gonna notice unless you tell them this is perfect. Now again, of course, you have to center the stay centered text. So select that with the move tool selected, center it horizontally. Now let's add some more text right here with the text tool selected. Let's click right here. Let's say this is a live show. Let's type in Tuesdays at 7 a.m. maybe or 8 a.m. up to you whenever, whenever you wake up. Let's keep it that way and change the font. Double click on the T to select all of it. I'm gonna have Poppins. It's one of my favorite fonts. Poppins Bold. This is nice. Press Ctrl or Command T with the Move tool selected. And let's make it smaller and set it right over here. Let's make it a little more smaller. There you go. You wanna see all of it? This is perfect. Now we want to add a little more text on the right as well and we want the same size. So again, another basic function. You can hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag, it makes a copy, and now you have a copy of that layer. Similarly right here as well, you have the subject layer, right? If you hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag, you have another layer right here, all right? So that's the shortcut to do a copy. We want it to be on the same line, and double click on the T, type in Join Us Live. Live. There you are. Love is fine too. Let's have it on the right hand side. Double click on the T and let's have it some red color. Something like this is fine. Okay. Also, if you want to make sure everything is aligned properly, you can go to view and make sure snap is checked and you can snap to everything. So right now what happens is whenever you try to move something and something is in the same line, it will snap to it and it will indicate it with those pink lines. So I want this to be in the same line. There you go. Now they're in the same line. And once they're on the same line, you can hold the shift key and then when you move it, it moves in the same line. There you go. Now it snaps to the end of D as well properly. So that's a quick tip. Now if you want to make it a little more fancy, let's add some grain to the background. And to do that, we have to create a new layer. And let's learn a new way to create a new layer. Press Ctrl Shift N, Command Shift N on a Mac. The new layer dialog box is gonna show up. Let's name it Grain. You don't have to understand much right now. Just change the blend mode from normal to overlay. Just know that overlay is a blend mode which hides anything that is 50% gray, absolutely neutral gray. If you have anything brighter than neutral gray, it will make that area brighter. If you have any color darker than 50% gray, it will make that area darker. So let us choose overlay and choose fill with overlay neutral color, which is 50% gray. Check that, hit okay. That way you have a new layer called green and it is filled with gray. You cannot see it because the blend mode is set to Overlay and overlay hides everything that is 50% gray. If the blend mode was normal, this is what you would see. Let's change it back to overlay. Now before adding any filter to it, what do we do? We change this layer into a smart object Y so that we can change the values of the filter later. So let's select that layer, go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Now let's go to filter, noise and add noise. Let's add a lot of noise at about 40. All right, 40%, make sure uniform is checked. You can also try Gaussian and see what kind of results it creates. If this is something you like, you can go with it. For me, uniform is fine. I don't want to add color noise, so choose monochromatic and hit OK. Let's check that again, hit OK. Now the noise is very, very sharp. We want to blur it a little bit. Let's go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Let's add about 0 0.8, 0 0.8 or 0 0.6, up to you. 0.8 is fine, hit OK. Now have a look how fantastic this looks. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, have a look at it. The subject is clean, the background is textured, this just looks awesome. Now what now again is the advantage of converting this layer into a smart object? We can double click on Gaussian Blur and change its value right here. So for example, I wanna set it to one, hit OK. I can double click on Add Noise, and change its value. I can increase it or decrease it. So you get that flexibility with it. Now to finish it off, let us apply an adjustment at the top and we're gonna choose a color lookup. Something you can play with, experiment with. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose 
color lookup. The color lookup allows you to apply LUTs or lookup tables to your images. LUTs, in other words, are simple mathematics to tell, all right, make the bright pixels slightly darker, make the darker pixels slightly reddish. So there are different mathematical presets and you have all of these presets right over here. For example, this is fall colors, this is crisp winter, late sunset, all different kinds of wonderful presets, by the way, I love it. You can also download free LUTs from the internet. You can buy them, you can create them as well. I have a video on creating LUTs right here, which you can check out. So for this example, even late sunset looks fantastic on this one. We can go with it and decrease the opacity. I think it's too much. Let's decrease it to about 76. I don't know, there's something about that number. It always comes to that. Another good one that I use time and again is crisp warm. It adds that warmth to the image. Let's decrease the opacity, set it to about 62, that's fine. And there you have it. Now let's talk about layer grouping. Grouping layers is very important. So for example, if you selected join us live, Tuesday is at seven, stay centered. I want to center all of this, all right? All of them are now selected. So with the move tool selected, if I try to center them, it just centers everything on an individual level. All right, however, if you select all of these layers, so select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one in the row, everything is selected. Press Control or Command G to group all of these layers and let's name this text, all right? So all of the text is in one group. I can decrease the opacity of all of them collectively. I can move them around collectively. There are many other advanced features which we can cover later, but for right now, we can center it collectively. So even if all of it is moved to the right, with the Move tool selected, you can make sure that Align to Canvas is chosen and then you can center it this way. Even if Align to Selection is selected, you can select all. For example, you can press Control or Command A to select the entire canvas and then you can center according to the entire canvas. So for me, I always have it set to Selection. So in case I need to center it according to the selection, I can do that. If I need to do it according to the canvas, I can select the entire canvas and do that. Now, after you're done with the selection, do not forget to press Control or Command D to deselect. Also, grouping the layers helps you clean the entire thing up. So this is all the background. So select the first one, hold the Shift key, select the last one, press Control or Command G, and this is the background. And then you have the grain, then you have the subject. So everything is just so clean right now. Now you might also notice that the selection of the subject may not be that much accurate. If you come down right here, there are areas that is left out and it's all in the cutout right here. If you just wanna see the cutout or in other words, the mask, you can hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask button to just see that. There you go. White are the areas which show up, black are the areas which hide. You can hold the Alt key or the Option key again and click on the mask back in to see the entire image. So to fix it, you can simply take a brush, zoom in. So these areas are left out, right? So take white as the foreground color. So you can easily take the time to paint that back in. Again, there are very quick ways to do it. If you paint a little extra, by the way, you can paint that area in black because black hides. There we go, like that. Masking and selection is a whole another lesson for the future. Another important thing to keep in mind whenever you're working in Photoshop is that you take a break. If you're engrossed in your work for too long, you might miss certain mistakes that you're making. It might be obvious when you come back from your break. And in this case, I feel, why not add one more adjustment layer, one more color lookup? I really, really loved the late sunset right here. It just made it look absolutely dramatic. Of course, we don't want it too much. How about we add it just to the background? So if we take it under the subject, how would that look? Well, that's not too bad. Let's add a little bit of it. Oh, now that is starting to look something exciting. So at about 38% is fine. What if we bring it to the top? Just experiment. What if we take it down? There you go. What if we make another copy of it? So select that, press Ctrl or Command J and take it to the top of the subject. And we wanna apply it just to the subject and that's another basic function. So if there's a layer that you just wanna apply it to the layer beneath it, you can hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. An icon with a square and a down arrow shows up. If you click right now, you see this arrow right there? That means it's only applicable to the subject. Now you can control the opacity just for the subject. So for the subject, I want just a little bit of it. 28 and there you go. So how it works is that, for example, let's say I create one more layer and I just start painting on it. So with the brush selected, let's choose a funky color like green so you can see what's happening. And I start painting like this. It paints over the entire image. However, if I hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers, 
Here we have an arrow, we have another arrow, everything is directed towards the subject. It will be limited just to the subject. Let's create one more layer. Let's choose another funky color like red. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the line between these two layers. Again, whatever we do will be limited to the subject. Of course, you can break it. Hold the Alt key or the Option key again and click on the line again. It shows the icon with a cut. Click on that and it's outside of the clipping mask. So in this example, the real world application is we have one color lookup just for the background and we have other one just for the subject and we can control them individually. You can even go ahead and choose a different color lookup for the subject, for example, this one or soft warming. This just opens up a lot of possibilities for you. I like this one, I'm gonna go with it. Makes it pop. We have already learned this in lesson one, but in case you missed it, if you want the layer thumbnails to be bigger, just right click on the empty space. You can choose no thumbnails. No thumbnails are gonna show up. Small ones, medium ones, and large ones. However, if the list is too long and there is no space to click on, you can click on the hamburger icon of the layers panel. And inside of that, go to panel options. And from here, you can choose the size. In other words, the thumbnail size of the layers. Let's keep it medium, hit okay, that's fine. Let's close this, keep it clean. There you are. Finally, let us discuss the different types of layers. We have already discussed and covered a lot of them throughout the lessons. Let's clarify them. First of all, we have our raster layer. These are regular layers made up of pixels. Now, since it is made up of pixels, you can modify the pixels. For example, here we have a blue gradient background and on top of that, we have a regular raster layer made up of pixels. I can go ahead and erase it if I want to. So let's choose a hard drawn brush. We can erase it. No worries. We are just simply making the pixels go away. It's made up of pixels, so that is not an issue. I can paint in pixels. That's not an issue. I can change or modify the pixels, for example, by choosing the smudge tool or the blur tool. So I can push it around, do whatever I want. Now, since we are modifying the pixels directly, of course, there are drawbacks. For example, right now, let's say there are 1000 pixels. Just let's say for simplicity. Press Ctrl or Command T and I'm gonna make it really, really small. Hit enter and just apply it, okay? So the number of pixels reduced from 1000, let's say, to 50. Again, if we press Ctrl or Command D and try to make it larger again, we don't have any details because we only have the information of those 50 pixels and we are trying to expand it to 1000 pixels. So Photoshop has to guess all of that data in between and that is why we lose all the details. So if you're making things smaller or larger again and again, it is not very advisable to use raster layers. So what would we do in this case? We would right click on it and convert the raster layer into a smart object. And that is our second type of layer. Now you can press Ctrl or Command T. You can make it as small as you want and then you can make it as big as you want and you don't lose any details. Smart object is simply a preview of the source or the original image. Now this image is still made up of pixels. The smart object is simply a preview of that image, not the image itself. So right now, whatever I'm doing to it, for example, making it smaller, making it larger, we are doing to that preview. The source is not affected. However, if you click on the thumbnail of this, it opens the source for you in a separate document. And now, of course, you can modify the pixels. For example, I'm gonna take the eraser and erase this branch right here, all right? This one as well. And if I save it by pressing Control or Command S, the preview gets updated as well. Let's close it, there you go. This is simply a preview of it. And since it is just a preview, you cannot change the pixels of it. If you select the eraser and try to erase that, you cannot do it. So how do we get around that? We simply create a mask. So click on the mask button. The mask is created. Remember, anything that is white shows up. Anything that is black hides. So just take the brush and paint with white and black. So let's paint with black to erase it. So right here, we are painting with black and let's paint with white to show it. Again, here's one more advantage over the eraser that you can bring things back as well. The next type of layers are adjustment layers. We already discussed that. They adjust the layers beneath it and you can turn it off, you can change the adjustment at any point of time. Let's say you wanna change the blue of a shirt. Let's create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choosing hue saturation. With the help of the hand right here, click on the hand. If you click and drag on the blue, it will increase or decrease the saturation. If you drag it to the right, it will increase the saturation. If you drag it to the left, it will decrease the saturation. Pretty cool, isn't it? 
also if you hold the control or command and then if you click and drag it changes the hue so we can have it this color or any other color you want that is just fantastic so I'm gonna keep it this color for example you can change the saturation you can make it absolutely black or gray it's up to you now not all of the blue is selected to make sure all of them is selected you can expand the range the first thing to do is first increase the saturation all the way to the right hand side also the hue so that you can see which areas are being affected and then you can expand the range from right here the range of colors that are selected if this is all confusing to you don't worry about it right now just play with it just enjoy it and i have a master class also about hue saturation if you're interested that you can watch after this video so once you have selected the range of colors that you want to target you can modify it according to your liking let's make it black or gray up to you i'm gonna make it black looks pretty cool with that so here's the before here's the after and then you have text layers and shape layers which are vector based you might ask what is a vector well raster is a kind of graphic that is made up of pixels if you zoom in you can see the pixels for example this one right you can see those boxes right here vector is a kind of graphic that is not made up of pixels but based on mathematics now since it's not based on pixels by the way adobe illustrator is one of the most popular programs to create vector graphics and this is illustrator since it's not based on pixels no matter how much you zoom in it will never pixelate so i'm going to zoom in right here so even if we are zoomed in let's say how much 64000 percent it's not pixelated and it will not text layers and shape layers are vector based does that mean it will never pixelate in photoshop of course not because it's on a raster canvas this canvas is made up of pixels 4000 by 4000 pixels so this is a text layer right of course because of the canvas it will show pixels however if you make it larger for example if i select the game text press ctrl or command t no matter how large i make it it will not pixelate because of the enlargement you get the point so in photoshop it's vector based it is a vector in a raster canvas of course similarly shape layers as well so let's say i was to add a shape layer click on the rectangle tool icon if you don't see it click and hold in that group and you will have all of these shapes let us choose a rectangle and create a rectangle right here let's do it this way all right that's nice and you can simply change the color by double clicking right here and change the color to whatever you wish so i'm going to change the color to this one that looks nice and you can use one of those points around the corners to create a curve that's also nice and this my friend is a shape layer and you can tell it's a shape layer by looking at this icon right there you can tell a layer is a text layer by looking at the t and you can tell a layer is a smart object by looking at this icon right here this subject layer is a smart object so that's all about the basics of layers in photoshop please use the chapters to skip to any section of the video if there's an area you don't understand watch that again follow along and most importantly enjoy have fun with it download the practice files do your experiments use your own images you are the artist there should be nothing controlling you nothing keeping you inside of boundaries break free there are some exciting topics inside of layers that we haven't covered yet because they deserve their own class like fill like layer styles and there are so many other things which we will cover in future lessons thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and if you did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials i would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting pix imperfect on patreon and helping keep pix imperfect free for everybody forever thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating